All right, let's model a car body for automation, the car company tycoon game using the automation tools plugin. Now, while we fast forward through this clip, it should become pretty clear that this isn't a serious car body, but this isn't the point. The point of this video is to show off the tools associated with car body modeling and how we can speed up our workflow by using non-destructive modeling techniques. Perhaps the most powerful aspect of automation tools is we now have the ability to export car bodies with modifiers and shape keys, something that wasn't possible before. The first thing I'd like to point out about this body is it has and will retain its mirror modifier. Later, we will add a triangulate modifier, and I'll show you how you can manipulate it to fix triangulation without having to apply any permanent triangulation to your mesh. Before we get to that point, however, using my Ultimate Body Modeling tutorial series on YouTube as a guide, I'm going to blow past tutorials 1 through 11 and jump right into tutorial 12, Rigging, as this is where we arrive at our first tool to make our lives easier. Let's say all we have is this car body with a mirror modifier, and we're ready to start rigging. First, we're going to want an armature and an armature modifier. But also, for many of the automation tools to work, we need to set the body as the active mesh within automation tools. So I'll select the car body, expand the menu for active mesh, and I'll click on the eyedropper tool icon, and the name of the mesh will appear in the text box. The body is now the active mesh. Next, I'm going to click the Add Armature Modifier button. My personal preference is to always have the armature visible in front of the mesh. So I'll select the armature, navigate to the Skeleton menu, expand the Viewport Display menu, and click the In Front text box. Feel free to play around with these settings to meet your own personal tastes. This has also added the armature modifier to our active mesh and assigned the new armature to it. Not only that, but it's also added a vertex group named root and applied the weight of 1.0 to all vertices on the mesh, saving us several steps. Let's add some bones. If I navigate down to the rigging skinning menu and expand it, then expand the bones menu, I can click the add button and a menu will pop up. Here are a lot of options here with standardized automation developer approved bone names which you can add. Let's add a front length bone now. I'll move it into place from edit mode. Take note that the vertex group for this bone has automatically been added thanks to automation tools. I'll jump into pose mode and move the bone forward. And oh, let me go ahead and confine its movement to the Y axis only. From here, I'm ready to start weight painting. Automation Tools has us covered pretty well here too. I can jump down to the brush menu, open the Add Sub menu, and select Add. Now I'll find the Weights tab, and I'll enter a value that I want to use. Let's say 0.2 to weight this front morph with. I'll select the car now, enter Edit Mode, and highlight the vertices I want to weight with this new morph. Next, I'll jump into Weight Paint mode, and I'll want to do as we normally do and check our Weight Paint Tool tab settings. I can adjust the radius as needed and ensure the strength is set to 1. I also want to check the fall off and set it to constant, and under Options, I'll ensure Auto Normalize is ticked. Once all that is done, I can go ahead and swipe my brush over the masked area, and bam, Morph Applied. If I'm moving too fast here, or covering ground you need help with, the tutorial video I have for rigging is still relevant, so check that one out if you need me to slow it down a bit. And as a last note, don't forget to rig your bounds boxes if needed. Let's skip ahead now to the rigging being completed and briefly cover UVs. This is covered in more detail with the old method in the Ultimate Body Modeling tutorial number 15, the main thing that's different here is we're just unwrapping half a car, since we only have half a mesh, but otherwise, it's going to remain the same process. If you want to incorporate invisible wheel well covers, the way I'll be doing them is to unwrap them as a separate mesh element, the same way I do to the underbodies. In my workflow, the wheel wells and remaining lips are pelt unwrapped, while the underbodies and the wheel arches will be unwrapped later and collapsed to their relevant seams. Unwrapping half a car body can give you some odd results, 
so we may need to fiddle around with the UV a bit more, but this is a minor inconvenience. If we just take our half of UV, rotate it, and move it into the lower half of the UV space, it'll be easier to visualize what we're doing. Making sure my cursor is centered, I'll select all the vertices where the mesh is mirrored, I'll scale it flat, and pin it to the center axis in the UV space. You can use grid snapping, type in the value you want, whatever works for you. As long as you get it concentered, you're good. From here, refine the UV to your liking. Try to keep in mind, the more UV space you take up, the better resolution you'll have for fixture stamping. And remember to leave plenty of UV space at the front of the car, since this is the area where the majority of fixtures will go for most players. The next big improvement we have available to us, thanks to automation tools, is something we did in tutorial 17, which relates to shape keys. Normally, you would have to apply all modifiers, other than the armature, to export a car body with shape keys. No longer is this the case. We can simply add the basis key, add as many shape keys as we need, and it'll just work. If we look under the rigging skinning menu, we can find a shape keys menu, which gives us easy access to some shape key functions. From here, we can add our basis key and our first shape key. Now let's just throw in a morph and that's it. Finally, we can deal with triangulation, previously dealt with in tutorial 19. Instead of dealing with a destructive manual triangulation, now we can just add the triangulate modifier and set the quad method to fixed. Now, usually we will have some triangles we'll want to flip around and align with the rest of the geometry. This is again, easy to handle. Just select the faces you want to flip, expand the triangulation menu, and give either the rotate edges beauty or rotate edges fixed buttons a try until you get what you're looking for. Alright, let's fast forward and pretend we have a family of cars and we're ready to export them. If we expand the export menu, first we should see a file path, which you'll want to set up the location you prefer to export your FBX files to. You can export one collection at a time, or all collections at once. I'll start with the single option first, then the all at once option afterwards. Before we get started, I'm going to kick the armature out and put it in the root scene collection. To export a single body, we want to organize the body into a collection, with the car and the bounds boxes inside that collection. The name of the collection will become the name of your FBX file, so name this file how you would want it to ultimately appear when you import it to Unreal Engine. Select the collection you want to export and click the One Collection button. To export a family of bodies, order your collection into a hierarchical manner as shown here. Select the main collection and click the All Collections button. And there you have it, a vastly improved, non-destructive modeling workflow for your automation car body mods.